Hello, my name is Jeff Baker. I'm a professor of management information systems in the School of Business Administration here at AUS. And in the next seven minutes or so, I'd like to present to you seven alternatives and complements to traditional lecture style teaching. First of all, I want to mention to you the flipped classroom perspective on teaching. If you've been around education, you've probably heard of flipped classroom. It's a term that's used in several different ways. The general idea behind flipped classroom is that you want to take the students from their traditional role as passive note takers and you want to make them more active in the class. So typically with a flipped classroom approach, what you would do is you would provide students with a video or a reading or a chapter, something that they need to examine and look at before class starts. And then whenever they come to class, there's going to be some sort of learning activity that they will need to have read the material and have prepared something possibly before they come to class. Again, you want students to be the ones primarily active in class, and that's different than the way many of us traditionally do it where the professor is the one active, the professor is the one doing everything. So number one, the flipped classroom approach. Number two, the fishbowl approach. Fishbowl is something that I've used in several of my courses, and what I will do is I'll designate a student or a small group of students to be the first group in the fishbowl. They need to give a, a mini presentation to the class on some topic or subtopic. And once they've finished their presentation, it might be five minutes, it might be 15, depending on the topic and that particular day's material. But once they've finished their time in the fishbowl, there's a second group that will take their turn in the fishbowl. And the second group is responsible for asking questions to the first group might be clarification questions, they might ask how this topic or this subtopic, this concept applies to other things that have been learned in the course or in other classes. But the second group is responsible for asking questions. They take their turn in the fishbowl. And then the third group is responsible for providing a summary. Not just a summary of what the first group taught, not just a summary of what the second group learned in their questions, but all of that material together. Perhaps even adding a few points as well. So again, the fishbowl approach, you've got three groups, one teaching, one asking questions, and a third group summarizing. Number three, you may want to consider the 10-2 approach. The 10-2 approach is a small, maybe slight alternative to lecturing, where if you're lecturing or delivering content, I would encourage you to consider dividing your material into approximately 10-minute chunks and then giving students two minutes to reflect. Maybe you send them to breakouts, and ask them to come back with a question for you. Or maybe you talk for 10 minutes and then you have a poll question. But some way for them to have a small break or even to ask you questions um, after you've presented a chunk of material. That's the 10-2 approach. Number four, you may want to consider what I call the jigsaw approach. In the jigsaw approach, what you want to do is create a, a set of groups in your class. Let's imagine a class of 25 students, and so I'm going to create five groups of five. Each one of those five groups is going to study a particular topic or concept, and after they've done that for several minutes, probably in breakouts, using the, the breakout feature on Zoom or Google Meet or Blackboard Collaborate, after they've studied this topic in the groups, what I want to do then is, is shuffle everyone in the groups, um, very deliberately and specifically, so that someone from group one We'll go to a new group A, and I get one individual from group one in group A. I get one person from group two, one person from group three, one person from group four, and one person from group five. So I've created a new group where the students can have a new learning activity and learn from one another and from their expertise that they gained in the original five groups. So again, I'm taking these five groups and I'm deliberately shuffling everyone into five different groups where they all need to learn from one another. Number five, think, pair, share. Number five is called think, pair, share. In think, pair, share, I would pose a question or an issue or a controversial topic to students. Give them a couple of minutes to reflect on it, think on it. I would encourage them to make notes on this as well. And then once they've done that, I would pair them with another student in the class. Again, I would use the breakout feature on Zoom or Google Meet or on Collaborate. And I would pair them with another student so that then they can discuss as a pair. And then finally, I would bring everyone back to the class as a whole, and we can continue the discussion as an entire class. I find that pairing students with one another 
and giving them the opportunity to refine their thoughts and their comments and maybe even find some vocabulary to express themselves. I find that whenever students can do this, they're a little bit more willing to share in front of the whole class. For number six, I would encourage you to consider something called the muddiest point. Essentially, if you're delivering content in some sort of lecture style format, or even maybe it's a case approach or showing a video, but at the end of your time, allow a few minutes and ask, what was the muddiest point? What was the least clear thing that we discussed today? And ask students to, to let you know what wasn't clear. If you can allow time for this, maybe you can address those areas of uncertainty immediately at that point. Maybe you can provide an additional video or an additional reading or an additional article for them to consider outside of class. Or maybe that's where you want to begin your next class session. You want to begin with what was the muddiest point in the previous class, and you can start off by clearing up any misconceptions or misunderstandings. Finally, number seven, I would encourage you to consider asking your students to draw mind maps. Ask them to create a visual representation of the topics that you've been discussing. Some of our students are visual learners and it can be very helpful for them in order to think about how one topic is related to several of the other topics that have been discussed previously. Maybe it's just the topics in that class that day. Maybe it's topics that were discussed in the previous class or in the previous week or even in the previous month. So asking students to draw some sort of visual representation for how the topics all tie together can be very useful for many of our students. Thank you for your time today. If you have questions about this, you can contact me at jbaker at aus.edu. You can also see the link that accompanies this video. Finally, I want to mention that the content in this video and in the accompanying document at the link I mentioned, this content has been adapted from non-copyrighted material from an AACSB online teaching seminar. I sincerely hope you found it useful and I hope your classes go well this semester. Thank you, bye-bye.